All right, this is your first intro into tie dyeing. Today we're just going to talk about tying. One key overriding thing you need to remember about this, it is an art form, not a science. So don't be asking us a lot of questions on how to do this or how to do that. That has to come from the heart. So the first thing we're going to cover now is your pattern so that you'll know what we're talking about as we go through the examples. So, uh, bullseye, pattern number one, great example of it here, very circular. Um, you can vary the colors going from the center out being all different, uh, but that's going to be more on dyeing tomorrow. To get the bullseye, grab where you want it to be, pull it up, and you're going to be creating tying down the bullseye, um, and you'll be dyeing in different sections. You can also do multiple smaller bullseye, like so, that will all be different colors. They will all just be smaller gathers of fabric. Do we have to, to tie? If you're tying, there's a couple of things you want to remember. There's two types of tying. There's the string tie, which does not exclude dye and is quite inexpensive. There is the sinew, which is wax coated and it is quite expensive. If you want to tie something and exclude dye from the inner portions, you want to use the sinew. Please do not take 40 meters of the <laughs> sinew. Just take a small portion of what you need and cut that off with the scissors that we provide. Then we will tie a portion of, for example, on the bullseye you want to exclude, so you would take a longer piece, tie this off, and then pull, pull, pull to try and get an area where the dye would be excluded. Then you would take the scissors, which we don't have, which we don't have. <laughs> <laughs> and snip off this portion and get ready to do the next sinew tie, which would follow below that one. This would produce a bullseye pattern. So again, sinew, not the cheap string, but sinew, the expensive string, tied really tight to exclude the dye down below, and then trim it off. This is what the sinew is used for, and it produces the following pattern. Again, you've got bullseye that you can vary the color, and you've got bullseyes that can be exclusive to only one or two colors that you like. The other string, the cheap string, is used to hold your patterns together when you're finished. This is not used to exclude the dye, it's just simply used to hold the pattern together so that when you get ready to move this and place it in your Ziploc bag, it will stay together. First, write your name on your Ziploc bag. Because there will be approximately 525 <laughs> Ziploc bags in this room for the next day. Please put your class period number on it too, that will be helpful. Take your tied up, cheap string tied together, like we call this the pizza. Take your pizza, put it in the Ziploc bag. Now remember, on day one, there'll be no color on the t-shirt. Take this bag and place it in the designated drop box for your class's t-shirts. Uh, we've done bullseye technique. Another one is pleat. If you love rugby stripes, this might be for you. So this technique can be done uh, horizontal stripes, or if I'm wearing the shirt this way, I can get vertical stripes. And this one is not bad to do. Quite simple. If you're not very artistic and you like linear lines, not too bad. So if I want to get horizontal stripes going across. I need to collapse the shirt from the armpits inward, like so. And I would then, you could use the string at this point too. I would create tied sections to pinch things in. 
You can also use the sinew if you really want to block out and get rid of some of the dye, getting more white in between your stripes. Like so. I'm going quick. I'm not doing double knots or anything. Another one. Down the shirt. And then each block can be a different color. If I wanted my stripes to be the other direction, going top to bottom rather than side to side, rather than pinching in this way, I will turn my shirt this way and pinch it back in. Back in, back in. So raising the bottom of the shirt up to the top, tying again here. Here, wherever you like. Again, an art, not a science. Uh, and across. And you can create as many sections as you want, as many colors. I personally love some Seahawks blue and green, if you're going for that. But then you would create paneling that's going vertically. Um, another technique, very popular. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Um, another technique, the spiral. Classic, very Jimi Hendrix spiral style. This one is going to require a wooden dowel. Um, you may have done it with a clothespin in the past if you've done this before. So we've got various sizes of wooden dowels, doesn't matter. You decide where you want your spiral. You're going right out of the belly, out of the shoulder, out of the side. You're going to place the dowel at the center of the spiral that you want. Apply some pressure. And then you're just going to begin twisting in one direction. Doesn't matter the direction. Keep twisting, keep twisting. You're going to get these fanned out portions that you want to probably try to put in the pleats yourself. Otherwise, you're going to get one sleeve that's just like a solid color rather than getting the white and rippling effect you're going for. Keep twisting, keep twisting. And you're making that so-called pizza pie, compressing it all together. That's the center of your spiral. And this is where you get to get creative with the string to hold it all together. That one's not long enough. If you mess up and drop it, just start over. Thank you. Uh -oh. Creating a tie here. You can wrap it like a Christmas present if you're really talented. This kind of style, you can really end up with different colors on the front and the back in your spiral. Um, but we'll talk about that more in dyeing video part two. And some more, because I just don't feel it's quite crinkly enough and getting them out of dimension yet. One here. Get all these ends to get tucked in. Like so. So this will be what your shirt might be looking like when you're going to be putting it in the baggie for weighing the dye for the next day. So it's uncolored, all tied together, held in place. Um, this you'll be able to do like various colors. We'll talk about that again tomorrow. But this would be a spiral. If you're looking for a double spiral, we can do that. Um, Mr. Stedman, I believe, has a double spiral shirt that I made him. Looks pretty good. So this one, you and a buddy. I'm going to create a spiral up here. Will you please help create a spiral at the bottom at the same time? And twist. And you're going to get kind of concentric circles. You can twist in the same direction. You can twist in opposite directions. Again, an art, not a science. So we'll see what happens with that one on another day. You could crinkle these in. Maybe do one up here on a sleeve. Who knows? And again, tie it all up. Tighten it up to fit in the back. Uh, last one, my personal favorite, is the crinkle. So I have done like a flame style. I'm leaving like some negative white space on my lab coat, and I just did the flames off of one end. This style, I'll actually pull it off and show you, was done in a crinkle or crumple design. So if you have no skill, this is the one for you, where you just take things and bunch them up. Take stuff, bunch them up, bunch them up, bunch them up. Tying this to keep it together is a little bit more of a challenge, but it doesn't take skill to crumple fabric. So that's a right, nice basic one. You get all kinds of modeled effects depending upon where the dye ends up. 
the upper half of this blue one was a crinkle again, using several colors of blue, just squish and splash all around. So there's no real uniform design, but it's just crazy all over the place. So um, that's one that's really easy. Some others that are not traditional tying techniques, but uh, indigo dyeing or traditional fabric folding rather than tying, um, you can create some geometric patterns. So if I accordion fold my t-shirt, like so, creating very linear lines. And I'm not crumpling and I'm not like creating disarray, but now if you've ever folded an American flag, I'm gonna create these geometric triangles. Hold it back. And keeping, rather than folding and like getting it tighter and tighter, I'm just going back and forth, back and forth. This technique, you could do squares, you could do triangles. If you get real creative, maybe something else. Um, but this will create a really geometric and linear kind of design if you like straight lines. So if you don't like the crazy spiral tie-dye, who knows, and you have to have straight lines, you could be dyeing all edges of this and get a very linear and graphic pattern rather than a mixture. Um, we got all of our four styles. Uh, what not to do? Yeah. Uh, we might save this for the dye day. We'll save that for the dye day. Um, the tools that you've got. String, sinew, dowel. This stuff's cheap. The other stuff is expensive, so use sparingly. Ideas. Expensive. Cheap. Cheap. <laughs> um, now, one last note. Oh yeah, safety for chemicals. Tomorrow, when we get ready to tie them, they have to soak for a minimum of 10 minutes in the two buckets that you see on either side of the bench. That's the sodium carbonate. It's the mordant for the dye. They'll soak in there for 10 minutes. Then we're going to pass them out after wringing them out. When you finish, your hands are going to feel like they're a little bit slippery. That's what the vinegar is for. The carbonate is basic. And so you just simply spray your hands with the vinegar and they rinse them off at your bench and they're as good as gold, okay? So I think that's it for today. Remember, the whole idea is to get creative. The dyeing is separate from the tying. So you're just gonna wanna try a few things, undo it, try it again, see if that's a pattern that you might wanna do. And remember, we'll have the demos up here so you can try to envision how your pattern will wind up with dyes on day two. Thank you, Ms. Nevia Domsky. Yeah.